What's up guys, welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. With that out of the way, let's jump into our review. Today we're looking at the Lafroig 10 year old cast strength batch 14. Stick around. Okay, so we're doing a Laphroaig today, and this is a review that's been a long time coming. A lot of you have been asking for me to review this for a while now, but the problem is that this was actually a pretty hard bottle for me to procure here in Taiwan. Now, we all know the whiskey markets are different, and broadly speaking, Taiwan is an amazing place to be a whiskey enthusiast. But some bottles are either impossible to come by or massively overpriced here, and unfortunately, it's the latter for this one. You can easily find this bottle here in Taiwan, but it's massively overpriced, way more expensive than it is in any other market. It is not an affordable whiskey here. Luckily, I had a friend who was ordering in some bottles from the UK and he offered to help me grab this one. So thank you very much, Alan. Now, Lefroig 10 is a bit of a legend. A lot of people know it, a lot of people love it, and that's not just because we have an age statement and a high ABV. It's also because it's comparatively much more affordable than a lot of its Isla peers with similar specs. And beyond all that, it's Laphroaig. And Laphroaig is a brand that is darling to a lot of people. Now, I'll admit, I have a bit of a rocky history with them. I haven't always loved them, but I am warming up to them these days. We're cool now. Anyway, the batch I've got here is the 14, and it's been out for a while now. I feel like we're kind of overdue for the release of the 15. I'm sure it'll pop up eventually. But yeah, for the 14, uh, this one's been met with mixed reception, especially from people who are familiar with the Lafroy Cast Strength line. Some people say this is louder, it's oakier, and it's simpler than previous bottlings. Other people say it's one of the better bottlings in recent memory. Now, as someone who's had this before, but only on a few occasions, and never had a full bottle to myself, I can't really comment. I don't have the, the breadth of experience with this line. So I'll just be looking at this whiskey for what it is, but I can tell you that I'm excited for this review. I've only had limited experiences with the Lafroy Cast Strength in the past, but I can tell you that they were all positive. I really liked what I tried, and let's see if we can keep that going with our batch 14 here. Let's jump into our review, and in the meantime, if you could kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. So this one comes in at a hefty ABV of 58.6%. It is not a chill filtered whiskey. It is colored though. Uh, Lafroy likes to color a lot of their whiskeys and I, I poo poo that decision. Poo poo. So Lafroy bottles aren't known for being the most interesting bottles on the planet, but I guess there's something to be said for consistency. This one does have a green line across it. So, I guess that's exciting, or I'm easily impressed. Um, it's a Lafroig bottle. It's fine. I, I like them. They're not amazing. Four out of five for presentation. We've got mid farb stuff on the back, so we know it's colored. It also says that it's chill filtered, which is nice of them to say. And finally, it recommends that we add a splash of water to the whiskey, which is fair. I like to put in a bit of water myself. So overall, for information, by Lafroig standards, it's not bad. I will allow it. So I did add water. Let's try our nose. So it's sweet, a little bit fruity. We do have the, the peat, tar, the coal smoke, the medicine cabinets in here. Yeah, we also have like star fruit in here. Um, we have lemon lime, there's like a citrusiness. Lots of brown sugar. There's a tea note. There's also barley in here and there's a pastry note, like a buttery pie crust, a burnt pie crust type thing. Uh, it's big and it's bold, but it's not as loud or as simple as some people online make it out to be. I find it quite rounded. Uh, let's see where the palate takes us. Now our palate. Big. PD and very sweet. This is a this is a pretty sweet whiskey. Now, Lafroig has been getting sweeter over the last few years, 
Uh, that's something that's been talked about on the Whiskey Lock channel, which is a fantastic channel, by the way. Go check out his content. But yeah, uh, that's that's something that's apparent here. This is sweeter and it's less medicinal than the Laphroaigs of yesteryear. So yeah, this is quite sweet with big brown sugar notes in here and barley sugar and Turkish delights. Uh, there's a nuttiness to it, like kind of a marzipan type note. And it's quite fruity. So we do have red fruits. We have uh, cinnamon. We have oak spice, baking spices. There's an earthiness to this. And we have that crispy pie crust again. For our finish. Okay. Trails off into bonfire and coal smoke, dark chocolate, dark chocolate covered cherries. We've got some embers in here and then we linger on some vanilla, some pepper, some oak and a hint of black tea. Finishes long. As I said earlier, I have tried the Lafroy cast strength before, but it was years ago and I don't even remember which batch it was, so I don't have a lot I can compare this to. But going off of memory, is this as good as that earlier batch? I think so, but I'm getting old. My memory is not what it used to be. I'm not even kidding. I'm much older than I look. Here's a picture of me without all the lighting and the camera filters. <laughs> Now this is a pretty sweet whiskey and I don't mind modern Laphroaigs, but I think it does appeal to a more modern palate. Uh, it's definitely less challenging. The medicinal notes have been toned down and that sweetness rounds out a lot of the rougher edges. Still, I can see a lot of purists getting pretty upset with that sweetness. Uh, personally, I'm kind of indifferent. I did like the older style, but as I said, uh, Laphroaig has always been kind of hit or miss for me. But if you've always been a diehard Laphroaig fan, yeah, I expect you won't love the new direction. Sweetness aside though, I love this stuff. Uh, this is a bottle that I've wanted for years. I'm really glad to have it. I do think it's got more depth and complexity than your typical Laphroaig. And the thing is, this has been open for months and months and it hasn't even started to go flat. And that's usually a problem that I have with a lot of the, the lesser Laphroaig offerings. So I'm really glad that this whiskey has kept a lot of its vibrancy. And actually, vibrant is a pretty good word for this whiskey. I think it's fun, it's dynamic, it's big, and it's bright. And bright is definitely not a term that I would usually apply to a cast strength peated whiskey, but it works here. Like this doesn't hit you with too much weight or intensity. It doesn't feel like this tidal wave of ash and peat and coal and smoke and medicine cabinets. It's much more measured than that. As I said, it's rounded, so it's not nearly as heavy as let's say a cast strength Ardbeg. Now this has been accused of being more simple than a lot of the previous batches. I don't know about that, but as far as I'm concerned, this one has plenty of complexity, at least for me. Uh, I love the tea notes. I love the barley sugar notes. I love the bonfire notes, the smokiness. And we still do have that, um, that medicinal note in here. It's just more toned down than it used to be. All of these flavors bounce off of each other nicely. There's nice interaction. Nothing overtakes anything else. And listen, I believe I mentioned it recently in a review of Finlog and Cast Strength. I talked about how peat bombs and, you know, peat monsters, these huge Cast Strength peated whiskeys, are not my favorite style of whiskey. Uh, sometimes they can be beautiful, but other times our peat is just too overwhelming. It's too much of a monolith and it just takes over the entire experience and it feels very one-dimensional. Luckily, that's not the case here. This whiskey is vibrant, it's interesting, it's dynamic. Honestly, I have nothing but good things to say about this whiskey. I'm really enjoying this bottle. And I can't even say that I have a problem with the new direction that Laphroaig is taking where it's getting a little bit sweeter. I know a lot of you out there are going to take issue with that, but damn, this stuff is good. My score here is going to be 90. So this one gets a very strong recommendation from me. I think if you're a Laphroaig fan, you won't be disappointed unless, again, you take issue with that sweetness. But even then, I'm sure you'll find plenty to enjoy in this maybe just a little bit less than the older stuff. And I would also recommend this to non Laphroaig fans. Now I do like Laphroaig, but as I said, I've got a bit of a rocky history with them, although I am warming up to them. They make excellent whiskey, and I think this is some of their best stuff. I love this stuff. I like it better than their lore. I like it better than the recent Karchis release. 
This one's a winner for me. So if you're not in Taiwan, and that's most of you, I think this whiskey is excellent bang for buck. I don't think there are any other age-stated cast strength OB releases from Isla that are this cheap and this delicious. Uh, I'm glad they're keeping this one affordable. It's highly recommended, very worth the money. All right, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to help support the channel, please consider becoming a patron. Otherwise, you can like, comment, and subscribe. Of course, I do want to hear from you. Have you tried our Lafroy cast strength? Which batch was your favorite? What are your thoughts on batch 14? Let me know all of that down below in the comments. Also in the comments, you can let me know what you want to see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.